And finally, I want to talk about the parents who are taking this exemption for their kids. Because as we know, many of these kids, are, or these children, are very little, and they're not making the choices themselves or taking the exemption themselves. What I have heard over and over is that this is miseducated educated parents. They're the bad actors. I have had the opportunity to speak to many of these so-called bad actors. I want to tell you, they are very educated and smart people. If you haven't heard the testimonies of many of these parents, I strongly encourage that you, that you do. Because the reality is that they are the farthest from what we call those who do not know what they're doing. These are not the non-compliant group we are talking about. These are parents who acutely know what they're doing. They know the risk they are taking, and they know what, why they are doing it. And we know there are various reasons. And some of them are exactly what they say, which is they have deeply held religious beliefs. But many have witnessed actual vaccine injury. For me, some of the stories which I heard on the actual injury really made a big impression. Those were heart-wrenching testimonies where they said, where there were descriptions that in a close process of when the vaccination was given, they observed changes within a matter of hours, days, some which impacted and left their child differently for, a long, for their life thereafter. They could, not, they could not bear that. They described that in order. And the medical community is saying that perhaps this is not because of the vaccine, but for them having lived this over days or weeks during the time this was administered, they can't shake it off. And now for us to ask them or force them to give that same kid or their sibling another shot, No, sir, that's not okay. That's not okay. I understand that the medical community is extremely educated and has is, and solves a lot of problems, but I do not believe that somebody who has seen something very horrible happen and believes that the cause of it is that vaccine can be forced to take that vaccine again, and this body will be the agent which will make that forcible action happen. And by the way, the science says nothing's going to happen. You're going to give the vaccine, the child is going to be okay because they're most likely in error. But I want to ask the question, what if in one child out of that 8,000, one out of that 8,000, the science is wrong and something happens? Do you want to take that? Do we want to take that responsibility? And by the way, we have also given the pharma companies or the firms which make those vaccines a carte blanche liability waiver. I don't see how I can wake up in the morning, look at the mirror and say, I'm going to force those 8,000 parents, many of whom have actually witnessed real, real pain to forcibly take that vaccine when I know that for the next five to 10 years, there is no urgency. I don't think it's okay. Even one child, it's not okay. When we get elected, one thing, we do say we will not do no harm. We will only help our public. We will advance the public good. That's why I am in this, and I know that's why all my colleagues are in this. But this bill will force many parents to make a choice which is too difficult for them to make. I'm sorry, I don't think I can get up in the morning and look at the mirror if, if I were to force a, a parent to give a vaccine which they believe, and I understand that their belief could be wrong, can incur more injury to their child. 